Just a quick disclaimer before the video starts, I'm not saying these things because like I'm hating on Vex Air purely from a I hate the idea of Vex Air perspective, I just think that the implementation is not going to be very good and I think that without addressing these issues with the implementation and its current state, the program will never be successful which ultimately hurts everybody involved. Hello, this is Evan Rogerson and I'm Motor Gang here. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Vex Air, which is the newest Vex Robotics type competition. I think it's just going to be a complete and total dumpster fire. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And let's get down to breaking down the new Vex Air game, which I believe is Pick and Drop. Yeah, it the name just doesn't stick. Um, so kind of going back to the like original history, kind of with regards to this. So. This is using Wayback Machine, so this was uh, like last season. There's been like an RECF aerial drone competition for a while now. And that was like up on robot events. And then they like announced that they were doing like Vex Air and all this stuff, I think at Worlds. And then like you go to later on, so this is like fairly recently, yeah, August, the so beginning of this season. Um, aerial drone competition is gone. And now there is Vex Air. So my first impression, and I think a lot of people also thought this same thing is like, Aerial drone competition is now kind of being replaced by Vex Air. Um, you know, they're going to be kind of like the same thing. It would be so silly to have two drone-related programs both existing at the same time, targeting the exact same demographic. How silly would that be? Surely such a thing would never happen. But then I found out through the RECF YouTube channel that aerial drone competition does still exist. Um, you can see it's here now. They talked about it on their website. They have Six to have a full time warp. Um, not gonna play the audio there, but like they have like their full aerial drone competition game, um, and that's like still up, and that has like a full game reveal video. Um, so aerial drone competition, it's always been like a smaller thing, but I think it probably does decently well, and it seems to have like a decent amount of involvement there. So cool, and like, yeah, they it's now not on robot events; it is now on RECF events. So that's like a whole different thing, and you can yeah, you can go, and we can like look at it and we can see all these events so like recf drone competition is very much still like a thing that is happening completely separate from vex air and also based on some screenshots on discord um you can see from this is uh, michelle recf and she is one of the heads i think she's the head ref for the gdc and the head like recf person on the gdc and she says recf has no role in the vex aerial drone competition um, so I have no insights. Different GDC. So this is like kind of Vex doing their own thing, not at all associated with the RECF. So that's kind of interesting, um, considering it's still like on robot events. So curious to see how that plays out. Also, you'll notice here that it is Vex Aerial Drone Competition, not to be confused with V-A-I-R-C, which is Vex ai robotics competition um because the one that has air in it is actually not the aerial drone competition it's gonna get really confusing like i said aerial drone competition that went poof and and then the ai competition popped up and this would used to see let me just wait for the wayback machine to load so yeah as you can see here it basically just redirects you to the vex page for the aerial drone so like there was no information up on it yet. And then as you can see, when like we're looking at the VEX Air page now, you can see that later on it popped up with this key dates for the VEX drone competition. So 9.15, that was like oh, almost a month ago, um, where the game and curriculum overview released. Um, basically, all that they dropped was this picture right here. Like that's it. They didn't do drop anything else associated with it. So that was kind of my first concern there because I thought like, Game and curriculum overview released. I thought it would be similar to like the way Vex Worlds does it because they do have a game manual release separate. So I was like, okay, they're going to drop the game reveal video in this one. And then in the next one, they're going to drop the full game manual and everything else. Kind of like how Vex Worlds does it. Also drop like the field models and stuff at the same time here. But no, they literally just dropped this picture for this is, hey, what your field's going to look like. So there's that. And then on 1010, I suppose they dropped the video that I showed you right at the beginning, where it's pick and drop. It dropped um, earlier in the afternoon, if I remember correctly, and it had this game manual now available slide at the end. Um, I have a YouTube short of this, but it didn't work. It was a 404 error. 
so overall, this just speaks to me of the whole thing being incredibly unorganized and just kind of like a mess and not really quite ready to roll out. Last time that a new VEX program was aired out was VEX AI, and that was a complete mess. The first season, which, yes, they did have COVID limiting them, but they still decided to go ahead and announce it, even though we were in the middle of a pandemic. That was a complete mess. Um, like the world championships didn't happen. Um, for Tipping Point, they said that Vex AI was going to happen. It never happened. For Spin Up, they said that Vex AI was going to happen. It never happened. For Over Under, it finally happened. And they got like, I don't know, maybe 20 ish teams to do world championship. And then for High Stakes, it did kind of exist more throughout the season. Like they had a world championship, really nothing else outside of that though. And it ended up being won by a robot that just tier three hung during auto. The last time Vex rolled out a program it took like five years to get up on its feet and up and running so i would expect similar things with vex air especially given how disastrous the results so far have been with the rollout another thing that i'll go ahead and point out is if you look at the vex drones they are temporarily out of stock so i cannot take this as a good sign that your required item to have for the competition is out of stock that just doesn't seem like a great thing right now and like last time they had a big rollout like this was the introduction of the V5 system, which that was, oh, I want to say like 2019. Um, I was around for that. It was a mess. That's where the whole ships in eight weeks things come came from because they kept telling everybody, oh yeah, the V5 kits are going to ship in eight weeks, guys. And like we ordered ours in August and didn't get it until like the spring. So it was just a complete mess with the rollout there as well. And I wouldn't be shocked if something similar happens here as well. Additionally, I'll also kind of point out the price tag. $700 for a drone is kind of expensive. Like, I know I was talking about the aerial drone competition earlier, and their stuff seemed to be much more reasonably priced. So I think it would be a very hard sell budget-wise for a team to decide to go with the air competition over the RECF aerial drone competition purely from a budgeting perspective. Additionally, they haven't released the cost of the drone competition fields, and they are not available for ordering. If it's similar ballpark to a V5 field, which that that's is both a 12 by 12, so I imagine it'll be, I don't know, similar, you'd be looking at over $1,000 in order to order this field. And they're supposed to start shipping in two days from now, and we still don't have a price tag, and they haven't been up for sale yet. So again, I can only see that this is not going to be a very good rollout. I also just kind of want to mention the surprise that there's no actual like reveal video for this. There was the video that I showed you right at the beginning, the 50 second teaser thing but no actual video showing this off and i feel like that also does not bode well for the program like i know that those videos are probably quite expensive to make just because of all the rendering and the amount of time that it takes and you have to pay the people to do the effort but i also feel like they're a massive thing to get people into vex like i at new member things i always make sure to like show off the game reveal video to get people excited and hyped but you don't have anything like that for vex air so i feel like that's probably just gonna hurt the product like people are going to be less likely to buy it and it just also shows that they're not really putting a lot of effort into this in my opinion maybe that'll drop later but again if you're dropping this after we thought you were already going to be dropping it like that just shows that you're behind schedule and not doing a good job of managing this product one other thing that i kind of want to point out before we get into the game manual which is probably the worst part is you'll notice this is what it was showing like all for the summer and up until I think like a couple of days ago when they actually dropped the game manual is you'll notice vex air Dr drone competition said grades nine through college um so collegiate university it implied that like just like vex u and vex ai these programs would be available to college students and i know that there are lots of college teams that are planning to get like an aerial drone thing started up but now if you go to the current website it just says grades nine through twelve this is robot events as it currently stands and college seems to just be completely gone from vex air I know some people who specifically spoke to their VEX representative, like previously, before this got changed on the website, and were told specifically that yes, VEX Air will be offered to university students as a university competition. So they were like, cool, I really hope that nobody actually ended up buying any of the VEX Air stuff, because it looks like it's now not going to be available for college students. They just changed that on them. And maybe some intern at VEX just messed up and accidentally changed it. But it seems weird that they would intentionally go from saying it's for college to not. And yeah, that's where this screenshot comes from of how come no college VEX aerial drone competition. Um, 
So again, kind of crazy that this has changed. Either somebody screwed up big on the website or they misled a bunch of college students into thinking that they could do this. And I sincerely hope if anybody bought the products, they'll be reimbursed, but probably not. Now, you might be a reasonable person and think, well, surely it explains it in the game manual, because like the VexU game manual and the VRC game manual, they all have descriptions of who's allowed to compete. So let's go ahead and take a look at the game manual, or the lack thereof. So let's go ahead and break down this game manual. It did drop on the day that they said it would. However, the game manual is not finished, um, which you'll kind of see once I get to the end. We have like some slides here that are just like, um, it'll be released in a future game manual update. It'll be released in a future game manual update. So really, they did not drop a completed game manual when they said they were going to. Again, I think this is going to be very behind and have a lot of issues. The other thing that I just kind of want to point out quickly is this does not, like a lot of this is very much copy pasted from the VRC game manual. You can look at this and be like, oh yeah, these were very clearly uh, very inspired by each other. And we also have things like um, let's pull up G1. Also, no hyperlinks, so this is kind of awkward to navigate. And it just gives like a unfinished vibe. Like when we compare these side by side, you can very tell that like, okay, G1 is the same rule. It's treat everyone with respect. A lot of the rules you'll notice are like reused, even when it doesn't really make sense for them to be. Like they do change some stuff like, okay, for a flight team member to consult with head referee, as opposed to, okay, for a drive team member to consult with a head referee. Um, but like some things just like aren't up to date. Like in the manual update, um, you can see like they added this rule that you're not allowed to record conversations with the head referees. However, there's nothing in that for this new definition of G1. There were also other cases like this. I don't remember all the details right now, but I noticed other cases of things that were changed in the game manual update, the most recent one, that just were not reflected in the VEX error update that are going to be changed because they're like the exact same rule. So very weird in regards to this. Yeah, it's like laid out the exact same as a VRC game manual. So I'll just kind of briefly break it down, I suppose. Um, Basically, you have, it's like Vex IQ kind of. You have a red team and a blue team working together to try and score as many points as possible. However, the referees just sort of are supposed to stand between you, which is also kind of weird. Um, and we don't know a lot about how the tournament structure is actually going to work because the tournament rules aren't in the game manual. But like, instead of using like um, tournament champions, or no, elimination matches, it uses like finals matches. Um, as opposed to elimination matches, which finals matches is what Vex IQ have, which is the other like cooperative, non-competitive um, robotics competition. Then yeah, it's just like some rules are weird. Like there are no timeouts in the Vex Air Drone competition. Like that's just weird. Why does it need to be a rule that there are no timeouts? It kind of goes against the way that the manuals are usually structured. And then yeah, basically like you have these different scoring game objects around the field. Um, and you try and like get these orbit balls and cargo inside of those objects. Um, there's a lot of graphs. Um, I'm not really even going to look at it too much because I don't really care about the scoring. But like the scoring in there all seems to be fine. Um, very convoluted though. Like there's a lot of different ways to score points. And it also does have like live scoring. Um, which again I'm not a huge fan of. No mentor built is still in here. Which is kind of weird because I'm not sure how much you can really modify them. Again there are no rules pertaining to this yet but you can't be mentor built i get mentor coded um because i guess there is going to be some sort of autonomous section again it's not in there we don't know they haven't explained any of these things oh that was the other thing that they kind of mentioned is teams that participate in zero qualification matches cannot be considered for judged awards and the vex air manual still leads teams that do not persist in and any qualification matches cannot be considered for judged awards. They still have the unclear wording in here. And this also implies that there's going to be judged awards for this. So I don't know if they're using the same guide to judging since RECF isn't really like doing this. But there's no explanation of any of that here. Again, feels very, very unfinished. There's also going to be some sort of field control system. Um, but again, there's no real details on this out yet. Additionally, one thing that also kind of concerns me is the way that things are structured. Um, the matches are four minutes long, broken up into three 80 second periods. So one minute, 20, one minute, 20, one minute, 20. Yeah, you can kind of see here. Um, so four minutes, 
120, and then there's breaks in between each section. So, like, during the breaks, like, I guess if your drone gets stuck upside down or something, you can go and, like, get your drone and reposition it based on things. Um, and you can also, like, talk with your alliance partners, I guess, during this break, and then, like, reevaluate and come up with a new strategy. However, breaks aren't a fixed length. It says that they'll be, like, about a minute. Um, but overall, this just does not seem good from a logistics and scheduling point of view. For VRC tournaments, um, I've been an event partner plenty of times. If you're like absolutely pushing through stuff and like super experienced volunteer team, you can run like a three minute match cycle time. That's like really the best that you can shoot for. Realistically, we'll just say like your average run of the mill tournament that only has like two match fields, probably going to be running closer to a five minute cycle time. And that's with a two minute match. And also these matches have four teams on the field at once, as opposed to the VEX Air ones that only have two teams on the field at once. And um, there is no, isn't really a break for VRC. I guess you could say there's kind of like one, which is scoring auto, but even then that's going to be much shorter. And so let's just say we're running an average VRC tournament, five minute cycle time, where we have 32 teams and each team is going to get six matches. Let's see how long it takes for us to play all of our qualification matches. I don't feel like I'm being overly generous with any of my estimates here. So first off with, we'll calculate how long does it take to give every team all of our matches. If we have 32 teams, and each team needs six matches, but we get to have four teams per match. That means we need to run 48 matches. And if we have 48 matches and each match takes five minutes, that's going to be 240 minutes divided by 60. That ends up being a nice clean four hours. So fairly normal four hours to get through all of qualifications. Nothing too crazy there. Now, let's do that same math for a VEX Air competition. So again, we're going to have 32 teams, six matches per team. However, a couple things are different. Our matches are now longer. It recommends we have a one-minute break in between each of our four-minute matches. So matches take six minutes. And then we'll, again, do a very generous one minute to score the entire field. So we're looking at seven minutes instead of five minutes to run each match. Additionally, we only have two teams in each match instead of four teams. So when we do this math, we have 32 times six that's total number of matches but we get to have two teams per match so that drops down to 96 and then we have to keep in mind that it's going to take us seven minutes to run each match and then that's the number of minutes we divide that by hours it is now going to take us almost three times as long in order to get through all of our qualification matches like a regular sized vrc tournament will take 11 hours to run just qualification matches for vex air so just from a logistical perspective, I have no clue how this is going to work. You're either going to need significantly more fields to reduce the match cycle time, or you are just going to have to host tournaments that have significantly less teams. Like I used 32 for this number. I feel like that's a fairly normal average VEX tournament size. Or the final option is you just don't give every team six qualification matches, which sucks. You're getting less bang for your buck when you go to a tournament. And then, yeah, finally, I just want to want to close out like there are inspection rules and some examples of what is legal from the VEX air kit, but there's no real updates on a lot of these details here. And like some of it just feels weird, like robots may only use one official VEX air drone battery at a time. Decorations are allowed, but like there's just no explanation for all of these. And there's just not a lot of depth here and none of the other resources are out. So that kind of explains why I feel like this is just going to be a complete mess of a competition. And if I were you, I would recommend staying away from Vex Air for a while. At least sit back the first season, see how it goes. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe it'll be a really big success. But I just don't see how this is going to roll out based on how it's rolled out so far and based on some past experiences and just like the math behind it. So I would highly encourage you, don't try out the rookie season because this did not end well for the Vex AI teams that tried it out previously at least wait and see how the first season goes before you go ahead and get involved. So that kind of wraps up my thoughts on Vexair. I would like you guys to take down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts on this program. Do you think it's going to be a really big success? And if so, why? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.